start, um, we're going to do the UB versus, uh, or actually tell us a little bit about yourself, Justin. Well, um, I'm, uh, as you said, CEO of the Rap Institute. Uh, we started our company in 2014 and we're an online streaming video platform that teaches people how to rap. Uh, and we cover everything from, you know, uh, walls, floors, windows with digital full print graphics, as well as PPF, tint, color change. I have a lot of business courses as well. Uh, we started off with 80 videos and now we have almost uh, 2,500 and we come out with five new videos, uh, four to five new videos a week. So uh, really exciting, fun company to be with. Uh, we have you know tons of members worldwide and our slogan is never stop learning. And uh, it's, it's something we're passionate about and we live by and uh, we're always trying to pick up new ways to rap and inform people and make the rap industry bigger and better. Nice, nice. Well. I know for, from experience that uh, all the videos that you've done have been definitely informative. Um, and hopefully yeah. the video that we're going to show right now, which is going to be the comparison of UV and Solvit Inks, is going to be very informative to everyone that's watching here. So yeah. Go ahead and load that up and start with that. Let's do it. In this TWI 360 video, we're going to do a deep dive comparison between Mamaki's Solvent Ink versus UV Ink from an installer's perspective. So we're going to put it through the paces in terms of cutting, stretching, and much more. And let's get to it. We'll begin by looking very closely at the face of the samples. This is the UV sample, and you can tell with nice vibrant colors, and when you get close up, UV Ink has a bit of a texture to it. Always have to keep in mind that with UV Ink, you have to choose the right lamination to avoid silvering. Now here's a close-up of the solvent ink, and the ink is actually a little bit more vibrant, so a little more color to it. And if you look closely, you have a nice, good, smooth finish, unlike the UV ink, and it laminates nice and easy and straightforward. So you have to think about that a bit in production. And now we move on to a stretch test. So we have two pieces, UV and solvent ink, and we're going to stretch them exactly the same. In fact, we're going to stretch them a lot. So here, Jemus anchors it on the table adds some heat and he's going to stretch this piece, and this is the solvent, around 40%. So he pulls nice and hard from the top and then anchors it on the table. So a nice slow steady pull. Once he locks it on the table, then he's going to move on to the other sample and that's the UV. So going to do the exact same thing, heat and stretch exactly the same distance and then lock it on the table and let's compare. Now the word on the street is that UV ink can't stretch nearly as well as solvent ink. So UV would whiten or crack when stretched to 40%. That being said, here's a close-up of the solvent sample. And now we move on to the UV sample and let's see if there's any difference. In this case, there's absolutely no difference. It looks nice and smooth, no whitening at all. So the color between solvent and UV, no difference when stretched even max to 40%. Now we do a slideability test. This is a UV sample and Releasing the liner, it slides and glides super easy across the surface. That's because UV ink cures right away, so generally the adhesive is safe and there's no issues with outgassing affecting the adhesive layer. Here's the sample of solvent right now, and let's see if it's affected by slidability at all. So, liner removed, goes across the surface, and it actually slides and glides quite well. That's because the right profile was used and it was outgassed for the right amount of time. That being said, this does have quite a bit of color in it, so with solvent inks you do get a little bit of curl on the edges, so something to consider for install, to be aware of. Now we get to initial tack just in terms of feel, and they both feel the same, which is great, but when they're folding each other, and keep in mind this is the solvent piece, it pulls apart quite difficult. So right now solvent ink, if it does fold on itself, does take a little bit of time to pull apart, and depending on the type of film you're using, that can be quite tricky. Now let's take a look at how the UV sample folds on itself and comes apart. So here it's flipped over and tacked just like the solvent print, but unlike the solvent, actually it comes apart quite easily. So with UV, if it does fold on itself, no need to worry. Now we move on to a cutting comparison using 3M Nifos tape between UV and solvent ink digital print. So with both runs laid on, now we're going to put a piece on top. This is the UV sample. And it's locked and loaded, finger run over the line, seal the deal. And now the solvent piece is placed over the 3M knifeless tape, locked on, exact same manner. The line is removed over the UV, and now the line is removed over the solvent. The top pieces are moved and placed to the side, and then the green filament is removed from underneath the pieces. So once both are set exactly the same, 
Now we're going to do a very close-up comparison on the edge and something very important to note, especially when going for high quality finishing, is that the knifeless tape through the UV does cut a little chattery in the sense you can see the edge. That's because the line for the 3M knifeless tape is braided and due to the texture of the ink on UV it does cut a little choppy while as the solvent cuts nice and clean. Interesting. Now we get into relief cuts. Very important to do when you're working around raised objects. And here's the UV sample and relief cuts can split. So it's very important when you're using UV ink to adjust your relief cuts. So in this case right now, it's very important to make a J for Justin, owner of the Rap Institute. And if you do that, it won't split. Awesome. Now here is the solvent sample and you're going to go back to a standard relief cut that you saw at the beginning with the UV print. But because of solvent and there's no texture in that ink, ah, it doesn't split. So standard cuts for solvent ink, J cuts for UV ink. Now we move on to deep recessed areas and many ways reading wrinkles. Very important. So we got two recessed areas on two separate doors that are exactly the same. And Jemus is going to lay this panel out. And essentially he's just going to go full cowboy. So he's going to release the entire liner. He's going to lock in it at the top take the magnets to the side and just release the backing paper over the entire recessed area, then lock it in on the high ridge. So pretty much a standard style of install with full print digital recessed areas when you're forming in. So as everything is locked, what's very important, and this is the UV sample, is you're gonna heat it. And normally when you heat the film, it does what's called glassing out. So the wrinkles disappear. But with the UV ink, it actually does something quite the opposite. So the heat does soften the full print digital film but as it softens, the rigidity of the ink causes the film to wrinkle. So if you're working with UV ink, once you see wrinkles as you add heat, you might think, well, the material's not relaxed, but actually with UV ink, it is. So even though it says wrinkles, and most of the time wrinkles mean no, glass means go, with UV ink, wrinkles mean go. Interesting. So now the film is formed in nice and easy, and you can see it flexes nice and straightforward. So you can, if the material wrinkles and forms in, those wrinkles actually smooth out, and then you have no issue wrapping the flat. And in terms of post heating right now, a lot of people say if you post heat UV ink, it tends to crack, but this one's quite flexible, so no issues there. Now we move on to the sample with solvent ink, and Gemus preps it in the exact same way, tacks it on the high ridge, adds heat, and unlike the UV, which actually got wrinkly, this glasses out. So glasses means go, so Gemus takes this application glove and forms it in. So with solvent ink, when you add heat, it should glass out. With UV ink, when you add heat, it should actually get wrinkly. So good to know as an installer, because oftentimes we're told and over and over, wrinkles mean no, glass means go, and you have to separate that when you're working with UV ink in order to get that nice, good works flow. So it's just basically like learning a different type of language, but the protocol for install stays exactly the same for both. This stretches in nice and easy to the deepest part of the recessed area. And now Jemus is gonna do a test with post heating, see how the color stays and actually holds nice and clean. So both UV and solvent hold their color when post heated and stretched into deep recessed areas. And finally, we move on to compound curves, in this case, a curvy mirror. So Jemus is now gonna take a piece of the UV full print digital film, places it on a wrap UEZ, and he's gonna stretch it from the point at the front all the way to the back. So he's basically going to stretch it between 15 and 20 percent. Wrap is a great way to even out tensions when wrapping compound curves. This comes from yellow tools. So once he stretches it onto the mirror, he releases it from the Wrap UEZ with a nice safe cut. And then essentially, because he did stretch it a little bit, it's going to trigger the memory of the film and relax it to the edge. So you can see with this, it has great color, so it does stretch nice and clean. And as he shrinks it back, it does shrink back nice and even. So even though this is a UV film, as he adds heat, it doesn't get those wrinkles that you saw in the recessed area. So slightly different dynamic there. And he's going to trim everything off right to the edge, seal everything down, and finish off with post heating again. And this is a compound curve that's actually made of plastic and a little bit hollow behind. And that can be a little tricky sometimes with UV ink if you stretch it a lot, let's say 40%, but if you keep it under 20%, it post heats fine with no cracking. And now here, finally, the sample with solvent ink. So Jemus places it right at the exact same spot and it's gonna stretch it exactly the same. So here he's gonna add heat and stretch it all the way to the edge. So same exact same protocol in terms of install, takes it all the way to that outside edge, relaxes nice and clean, and that color stays nice and uniform. So he locks it onto the main body. And in this case, the material didn't curl that much. So in terms of the, we talked earlier about a little bit of saturation and the kind of lifting on the edges, no issues here with the mirror because of the wrap UEZ and primarily holding that material nice and even on the edges. Jemus trims everything out, it stays nice and flat, and in terms of post heating, post heats nice and fine. So obviously no issues with cracking with solvent ink over time, 
And that concludes the testing portion of this TWI deep dive comparison between Mimaki Solvent Ink and UV Ink. And in conclusion, you can see that they both perform very well in terms of stretchability, holding color. You do have to think about in terms of solvent, a little higher initial tack sometimes, especially when it folds on itself. And with UV ink, you really have to consider relief cuts and cutting with knifeless tape can be a little tricky, but once you know about it, and thanks to this video you do now, you can actually get that great install performance with either ink. So therefore, I hope it helps you wrap better and faster. And that's always the goal of the Wrap Institute. Thanks for watching. Justin Pate. Excellent, excellent. So uh, again, thank you for creating that video for the UV solvent comparison. It was excellent, informative video. Um, I'm sure one popular question that everybody has, um, which is would be, which ink set, I'm sure you've done like a lot of vehicles or different wraps, which ink set do you think would be the most popular, or easiest to use when wrapping, whether it would be UV or solvent ink? You know, I think if you asked me that question uh, 10 years ago, I would have said solvent is better just because you know that it's going to go into those recesses, areas and compound curves. But I think now that uh, UV has improved so much in terms of flexibility, I think, as you can see in that video, there's really just minor differences between the two now. I think for the most part, they they install relatively the same, which is great. So uh, it really depends on what your company is doing. I mean, I think if you're doing you know, I do like the fact that the solvent has a little richer color. So if you're doing a lot of fleets, it's going to look, you know, kind of more, maybe more vibrant. Mm -hmm. uh, but that being said, you know, production wise with solvent, you always have that issues with outgassing. It maybe takes a little bit more time. It sometimes, especially in hot weather, it can be a little more aggressive for that initial tack. And if it folds on itself, that could be a little tricky. Uh, it depends on your installer level, you know. So for the most part, I would say if you're going to do a lot of fleets and a lot of vehicles pretty much only, then I would stick with solvent. But if you're going to be doing vehicles, but also do you doing like, you know, printing directly on flat substrate or, you know, getting into 2.5D printing, which we were going to talk about in a little bit, then I would go with UV, you know. So time-wise, production-wise, you know, I think it's a, a balance between the two, but I think they all end up being the same. So I would just say kind of do an analysis, analysis of what your company is going to specialize in and then just choose that. That's pretty simple. Excellent, excellent. And I, I saw you had a, a little shameless plug in there with the, the J cut versus the straight cut when um <laughs> you were doing the split test. I like that. So I'm gonna have to remember that next time I uh I get my car wrapped. I'm gonna be like, if you're doing UV, make sure you do that J cut. <laughs> well if you if you if you like that sometimes in the workshops, I instead of using application glove, I'll use a little of my uh my little spit and I call it Justin Juice. So there's the J cut <laughs> and the Justin Juice. So you got you got two options. So Awesome, awesome. Well, we did have a question in the chat, and uh, which was, oh, let me scroll up and see if I can get, oh, what ink was used for the print for UV? Um, I can actually answer that because I actually printed it. Um, we did use LUS 200, which is our MCS uh, warranted ink for 3M installers. Um, it's our ink that we recommend whenever you're doing like contour curves. Uh, it's our most flexible ink um, outside of our thermal forming ink. Um, so yes, that is the ink set we use for that one. Um, you can also use LUS 170 as well. Uh, LUS 200 has a more flex to it. So it's generally more, uh, openly wide used for vehicle reps. Um, yeah, not, I will say if I could interject, uh, a couple of years ago, I did a, a video for Mamaki, uh, and I remember the 170 was used and I did notice that on the, those mirrors that we wrapped and stuff like that. When I did post eat those, those did tend to crack a little bit or they didn't like being post eated on a hollow surface, but the 200 performed really well. So I would say, yeah, 200 definitely has a definitely an advantage, especially on those curves compared to. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, if there are, if anyone has any more questions, we'll keep monitoring chat. But we do also have another video we're going to show, um, which is basically using 2.5D to do a wall graphic. Um, so we'll go ahead and play that. And if you, if anyone still has further questions, you can still ask them in the chat. We'll be monitoring that as well. Cool. That is my bad. That is the exact same video. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, Justin Pate, CEO of the Rap Institute. And in this video from Mamaki's innovation days, the focus is going to be on 2.5D printing. If you don't know exactly what 2.5D printing is, well, it's right in between standard 2D printing, which is basically putting one layer of ink on either full print digital media or let's say on a board, 
or 3D printing, which is obviously printing an object. 2.5D printing basically takes the 2D style of printing, one layer of ink, and then just obviously adding lots of layers of ink to create a beautiful texture. Normally, people think of 2.5D printing just for flat, rigid signage, like this board. So this board, the snake, feels like the real deal and actually has 17 layers of ink on it. So, pretty amazing stuff, but, you know, flat, rigid signage, not a lot of options when you want to, say, put that on a wall. But you might not know that you can actually put 2.5D printing on standard full print digital media. What I love about this is it gives clients a lot of different options in terms of what they can put in, let's say, their home or their retail store, but also is a great upsell opportunity because for the most part, the install stays the same and your profits go up really high. So with that, what I want to do in this video is give you lots of tips and tricks on what to consider with 2.5D printing in terms of choosing the right media so it lays nice and flat on whatever you're wrapping, and then give great install tips and tricks so it goes super smooth because the install compared to a 2D printing is relatively the same but there's some really important things to consider that will really help ensure those high profits and a smooth install. So with that, let's get to it. So let's begin by talking about what tools you need to install 2.5D installs properly. They're basically the same as standard wall digital pool print installs, but slightly different. So let's get to it. First thing is heat gun. Now, oftentimes when you're doing wall installs, you might not, for the most part, need a heat gun because you're installing on flat and the 2D makes the material flat. But because 2.5D, makes peaks and valleys on the material, there's different tension points. So therefore, sometimes, even on a flat wall, you need to add heat. So you wanna get a heat gun that has a variable setting. Very important for that, and I'll show why in a second. So variable setting and heat gun. Next up is cleaners. Obviously, you wanna clean the wall. Standard cleaning applies. And for maintenance, always wanna just use soap and water. Keep in mind, with 2.5D printing, you're not laminating on top. So therefore, if you use, a, let's say, a hardcore solvent cleaner, it's gonna pull the ink off, which is not good. Always want to have a highly absorbent microfiber towel and you want to have a straight edge. Straight edge is necessary for aligning the panels if they need to be straight, but also trimming on site. Very important for that. Oftentimes you need a contour cutter ahead of time. So you want to pre-cut out raised objects. So you want something like this. This comes in really handy because when you're trying to trim out panels with 2.5D on the fly it can be really, really tricky. So cutting out ahead of time precisely comes in really handy. We're setting the panels up, masking tape. I always want to get two inch wide masking tape. Keep in mind that the texture of 2.5D lowers the surface energy, so the wider the masking tape, the better for hold. You always want a nice tool bag on hand to kind of make all your tools easy and you know grab them it's very straightforward. Now for squeegees, keep in mind what I just said earlier is the surface that you're wrapping on isn't laminated, so very important to put a fresh buffer on. You can use a wide squeegee, if you use a smaller squeegee, try to always get one with that corner covered, which is really good. So you want to use, let's say, a monkey strip or a banana buffer is a great buffer as well. Uh, you also want to use an application glove. Now, again, normally with a standard wall install, you'll never use an application glove. But you'll see why in a little bit, why application glove is absolutely necessary for getting everything down nice and tight in between the raised areas where the 2.5D print was. Tape measure, absolutely critical. Always you want to measure correctly, but especially with 2.5D printing, there's sometimes a limitation on how high it can be printed. Sometimes they say 96 inches. And if you're wrapping a wall that's higher than that, sometimes it's smarter to print it horizontal. So sometimes vertical panels, sometimes horizontal. Now we get to cutting, which is really critical with 2.5D printing. You can get up to, let's say, eight or nine layers for a full print digital print, which can make it very, very difficult. So if you use a standard stainless steel blade, it might not be sharp enough. So I highly recommend using a carbon blade or maybe even a ceramic blade for 2.5D prints. Just cuts it cleaner and better when you're on the job. Always, of course, want a safety box because you'll be clipping your blades quite a bit to make those good cuts. And maybe you won't even consider scissors, but oftentimes if you use this bodyguard knife, that's enough. Cuts clean and straight and very safe. And obviously sometimes you want to do markers and cut things out ahead of time, but for the most part, that's all you'll need. So similar to standard wall installs, the slight modifications mainly with the blade. So with that, let's get to the install. Let's begin by first talking about the layering of the 2.5D and what you have to consider when you're using full print digital media. Now here's the close-up of the 2.5D on rigid substrate and this one has 18 layers. Well, if you do full print digital media, the highest you really want to go is let's say seven to eight because if you go any higher, it might be really difficult in terms of the UV ink holding onto the surface, especially of any type of curves. What you also have to consider with 
0.5D printing is there's a couple options. You could do full color where let's say on that first one the mushrooms were raised. Well here the space in between is raised. So lots of different options in terms of what you want to raise up and what you want to keep down. You also have options in terms of the ink. Here is a gloss version, but they also have a matte version. Very cool. So there's a lot of room to play with, which gives your clients lots of options. Now we move on to what you have to think about in terms of paneling. So here, measuring from the bottom of the floor to the ceiling, and what you have to consider is on some printers from Mamaki, the most you can print top to bottom is 96 inches. Hmm. So in this case, top to bottom is around 104. Side, it's less than that. So if you go top to bottom, you're gonna be short a little bit. But if you go side to side, hmm, you'll have full coverage. So therefore, sometimes, especially like on this wall, it might be better to print horizontally rather than two panels vertical, which is standard. So in this case, horizontal might get you the most coverage. So now we get to cleaning. Standard prep, based on the full print digital wall film, you always want to just clean with a isopropyl alcohol, never clean with soap and water. You want to put masking tape on any raised object. So in this case, on the upper area of the fireplace on the bottom right there. So with the workspace prepped, now let's focus on the 2.5D print that goes on the full print digital media. What you're looking at right now is actually the adhesive side with the liner removed. And you can see that the 2.5D ink creates a texture on the adhesive side. So when you're installing, you really have to think about it like an interior film. So if you've done any type of installs with interior film, let's say crocodile or brushed, that actually creates high points and low points of tension. So here I'm using high heat on the heat gun. And because of that combination of, in this case, polymer calendar film and the rigidity of the ink right now is causing the film to curl up very, very quickly. So therefore it's highly recommended when you work with 2.5D ink, to lower the heat setting on your heat gun. That's why you want that variable heat setting on your gun. So now going back and forth, same flow, but right now because the heat is lower, the material doesn't curl nearly as much, which is a big win. And here's some things you need to consider when cutting 2.5D ink on full print digital media. If you're working on a table, because you can put nice good pressure on it, it comes off clean. But cutting it off the table right now, because certain areas are very thick, while others are very thin, plus the rigidity of the UV ink, it can cut very difficult when free floating cutting like this. So definitely something to consider. And that actually carries over to the install here. Let's say you're trying to work around this area around the fireplace and trying to make a free floating cut, which is pretty standard when you're doing normal wall installs. But as you just saw, trying to cut this material floating right now, there's no table to kind of cut directly on, can be really, really challenging. Once you make the cut, yes, you can go back to your normal protocol, but very, very difficult, big high chance of mistakes. So really, really difficult to do. So therefore it's highly recommended if you do have raised objects, you should create templates ahead of time. So this is when you wanna use that contour cutter, set it right here to the edge. Once that's set now, and you know exactly where the panel goes, then you'll say, for example, here, coming to the panel, right, mark it right where it needs to go. Then you cut everything off with the liner on and you're doing it directly on the table. So now this piece comes off nice and clean and because it comes off nice and clean, you can now fit it around that raised object very smooth and straightforward. And you can see that no need to cut free float cut, which is super safe. You should also consider what we mentioned at the very beginning of the video with tools is to use a carbon blade here. So carbon blade cuts through the 2.5D ink much better than a stainless steel. So using a squeegee assist cut from top to bottom, now you get a nice steady straightforward cut and you basically get the same setup with a stainless steel blade, but because that carbon is extra sharp and extra hard now, pull the excess film away, and now you got a very good, clean, straightforward cut that holds and looks professional. So definitely invest in carbon blades. Make sure you get a good safety box, and you're going to click them a lot to keep them sharp, but there's some good cutting tips. Now let's move on to the next phase. When making overlaps, you do have to consider which panel goes first. And in this case here, if you look very closely, the edge in a one inch overlap right now only has one layer of ink while the area next to it has those eight layers. So very important to think about which panel needs to go first, create a space that only has one layer of ink and then the top piece is gonna fit on like a puzzle piece. So very, very important to do. Otherwise you have 16 layers of ink plus the material way too thick. Now we get onto the install right now, and one option is to set up a hinge with masking tape. And that's why you want to use that two inch wide masking tape right there. Good hold. You can also use a backing paper cutter, which is highly recommended because now you can basically just cut off a section there, place it where you want it to. Again, you have that freedom slides and glides. And then once you get it into the position you want, take a wide squeegee right now and brand new buffer so it doesn't scratch the ink on top. Go side to side. Once it's locked in with that permanent hinge, 
Now you can release the liner, pull up and away, and then squeegee it on place. So very important to put nice firm pressure on because you want to make sure the material sticks because what you're squeegeeing right now has lots of peaks and valleys. So very important to put nice good pressure on it. And now this is extremely important when it comes to overlapping film with 2.5D. Now normally if you're doing a standard wall install, you know, the overlaps are very straightforward because it's just basically two flat layers going on top of each other. And even here with that negative space basically on the overlap and this piece fitting on top, trying to register 2.5D panels right next to each other is very, very difficult because of so many different tension points with the ink. So right now trying to measure and trying to line everything up and there's just, it's lining up okay, but it's not great. And you can see there's tension building up in between the points that are registering. So there's creating peaks and valleys. And if this was normal wall film that just had 2D printing on it right now, any kind of gaps in between, you can add a little bit of heat and those would generally flatten out and the registration would be perfect. But here, because of the UV ink sitting on top of the polymer calendar film in this case, because of those gaps, if you add heat, this is actually going to curl back and the registration is going to get worse. So very difficult to register 2.5D when the liner is off. So therefore, it's highly recommended to marry the panels when possible. So here, with the liner on both pieces and working on a table, the registration is now made perfect and masking, place, masking tape placed on top. So once it's placed on top, it's secure. And what you need to do now is flip the panel over and then you're gonna release the liner from the underside, then squeegee the panels together. So now they're nice and sealed super tight with that one inch overlap. Now the masking tape can be removed or kept on for install either way. And the backing paper can be cut away with that backing paper cutter, very easy and straightforward. Once that's removed, then the panel can be placed in position. So in this case, make sure it's good left to right. And again, this is obviously just a sample piece to show you techniques. Liner is, move, liner is removed here, liner is removed from the other side. So very standard, straightforward install process. And the registration now lays super flat and is pixel to pixel, which is great. So no need to worry about it going off and everything goes down nice and smooth. And very important, speaking of smooth, go over with that light heat and an application glove just to make sure the material in between those gaps of the UV ink is laying flat. So what you have to think about also is the UV ink is actually quite scratch resistant, even though it doesn't have a lamination, which is great, but it is sensitive to what it's cleaned with. So let's say maintenance for the client, if they take, let's say isopropyl alcohol or a surface cleaner, it will remove the ink. So very important to consider this and guide your client into the right protocols for maintenance. So in this case, soap and water does really nice. Otherwise a very, very, very light solution of alcohol and water. So once that's set, what you also have to consider is 2.5D ink is not only great for, let's say, walls, but it can also be used for laptops in this case. So here, taking a piece of material and going over the laptop after cleaning and prepping, squeezing with a glove to make sure that the material lays nice and flat on the surface, using that carbon blade to now cut it flush on the edge. So instead of having a normal, boring 2.5D print on the computer, now it has that great, beautiful texture, rock and roll. And what that also means is happy wife, happy life. That laptop was actually for my wife who loves this print and you can tell that she's super happy. So with that, this has been an overview of the 2.5D printing in terms of install and what you have to think about with production. Thanks for watching, Justin Pate. Excellent video there, Justin. Um, 2.5D application definitely is uh, a door opener for the entire print industry. Um, I, I will say when you originally uh, brought the idea to me, I was a little skeptical just because I didn't know how you were going to apply uh, layers of ink to a wall. I was concerned, but you actually made it look flawless. Um, can you kind of just talk to a, a little bit about like what gave you that inspiration to do that application in general? Well, I mean, it's a, yeah, I mean, it was something I never even thought about or knew about. And this summer I was, uh, Mamaki, Europe is like 20 minutes from my house here in Amsterdam. And uh, I was there, you know, talking to the team there and um, Mark showed me this uh, sample <clears throat> and he actually gave it to me. So it's on rigid substrate because he was showing me the 3D printers, which are amazing from Mamaki. And then he says, you know, do you know about our 2.5D printing, which I didn't. So he kind of explained it. And as he's talking, I said, can you put it on full print digital media? And he said, maybe <laughs> i said well so i said okay you know this is an interesting thing to experiment with so we actually just um uh, there's a great company called cover style and they make interior wrapping film in europe and so they paid uh we this is actually my house in amsterdam we just bought the floor below us and so they uh we did a whole video series on wrapping this with interior film and while we we're doing it 
there's a there's one wall my well my wife wanted a really cool print with a special mushroom design uh, and in the bedroom she wanted another print and so i thought ah well i just came up i just heard about that 2.5d maybe we could use it there so um that's the goal right now to do it so you know that was actually uh that video was for me you know obviously i tested it beforehand and put it through his paces but i haven't really done like a full full install on it and i'm still hoping to do that on, on this wall in the bedroom and it was really interesting to dive deep into it like open my eyes and or my mind and just say okay uh let's see how this installs you know and it was very different you know it, was re it really kind of took me by surprise the dynamics of the thick layers of uv ink and how they react to the film underneath because i think the material that you sent was ij40 which yes. is a polymer polymer counter film and you know that you know obviously it has its own built-in strut like if you, if you give that a kiss of heat it kind of reacts and shrinks while the top layer is super stiff you know and um actually this uh cabinet right or, uh, right there uh <laughs> when i was wrapping that with interior film that was a crocodile interior film super calendar that's a monomere calendar film and when you give that heat it actually shrinks a lot so it really reminded me of how the mushrooms installed where uh as an installer you have to be really prepared for it to go in different directions that you're not used to because there's really no uh anticipating what it can do and plus those layers are so thick of the uv ink and they're so hard that you know i don't like to use carbon blades but i had to there's no other choice to do that so once it went you know once i started to dial it in and understand how the material behaved then it became a lot of fun i mean when my wife i got done with this laptop i mean i, I wasn't joking about happy wife happy life uh <laughs> uh she i mean she i mean she, i've wrapped her laptop so many times and i'm telling you i've never I mean, I don't know if you can see it closely on the screen, but mm -hmm. I mean, that texture is phenomenal, you know? And so for me, even just for laptop wraps, I think you could sell these for a premium, you know? And that's kind of the whole point of why I like this 2D, 2.5D printing is uh, walls and floors, I mean, walls especially, but flat substrates are such great money generators by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then if you could add that 2.5D and dial in the install where the install is not that much harder than a normal install, but you're charging 70, 80% more, which I think you can with this. I mean, the doors that opens to profits and to making clients happy is phenomenal. You know, I mean, seriously, just to have a, like, I can't, I can't wait to see this on the wall. You know, I mean, just to kind of, I don't know, there's something about that tactile thing. And then my ultimate goal, to be honest with you, and I hope I can do this with you guys uh, in America, is I would like to do a car wrap with the 2.5D goals. Absolutely, you know? I'll, I'll definitely have to, Keep in touch with you on that. We'll come up with a design for them. I'm actually excited yeah. to do something like that. That'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, I know a company, um, one of my favorite companies in the world is uh, Metro Reps down in Miami, and I, they do really amazing cars. And so, you know, I really hope that uh, the Rap Institute has an event in December. Um, uh, that is uh, called the Rap Experience, and we're having that in December next year with in association with Metro Reps. So I'm hoping to debut the first 2.5D car wrap there. Oh, okay. Okay. Sounds yeah. cool. Sounds cool. Well, yeah. another thing I want to mention is like I, I noticed in the video you demonstrated a lot of like traditional ways that people would do installs as well as your modified way to install it because it is 2.5D. Um, I do want to take the time to say thank you for that because that's actually excellent. Most installers that are doing installs, you know, they just see, oh, it's final. I put it on the wall. It's the same way every time. Um, but you demonstrated that this is what happens when you do it the traditional way. <laughs> this is what happens when you do it the right way. Um, and I think a lot of people need to see that because it's it's hard to, you know, just uh, verbally tell somebody what they need to do. Yeah, I mean, so good. I mean, everything we, you know, the Rap Institute, aside from making members uh, videos for our members, which is our number one priority, we make a lot of product videos for the manufacturers, you know, like for Avery Dennison, for example, we've made like 30. And, you know, why we like making those is if you don't really watch that video ahead, because no one reads a product bulletin, to be honest with you. I mean, no mm -hmm. one's going to do it. But if you watch a video and you know, okay, I should post it at this temperature, I should make sure I do this, then you don't screw it up. And especially with 2.5D printing, you know, is you don't want to print an entire wall for, let's say, a, a retail store and then have your installers go in there and start to wrap it like a normal install. Then you have to throw everything away because... I mean, I'm, 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 the, the cost for printing this is, you know, the, the, the price goes up for production because you're using so many layers of ink. So right out of the gate, if you don't know how to install 2.5D, you're going to lose a lot of money. Um, so it, it, it's a different install. It really caught me, The first time I played with it, it caught me off guard. I was like, this is impossible, but nothing, nothing's impossible as long as you kind of open your mind and start playing with it. And at the end, I, you know, when I shot that video, I feel like I had it really dialed in. And I think even when I do more installs, I'll dial it even more. Even this... 
laptop, uh, we're going to put a video on the Rap Institute and I try to wrap it like normal. I just squeegeed it across and there were some bubbles and I heated it. And when I heated it, it literally just popped up and just, it, I had to redo the piece. Mm -hmm. And the next time I did it, I did it in a totally different style and it worked great. You know, and, even, and my wife who doesn't really care about rap or anything, she was, you know, watching me do it. She's like, oh, that was really cool. You made an adjustment. It worked, you know? Yeah. So once you dial it in, like with anything, you know, uh, once you dial it in, you're like, okay, this is cool. And I, I, if you're, you know, anyone out there who's watching, who has a UV printer, I'm not joking, dial this in as quickly as you can, because I'm telling you, once customers feel the difference, they're going to want it. And if you know how to install it, you're one of the first people in your city who's doing it. And you're, you're making so much money in basically the same amount of time. It's cool. Mm -hmm. And you also have a edge up on your competition because now you're able to provide something that they don't know how to do. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, as I said earlier, like when we did the interior wrap in my house, like right now that those cabinets are crocodile, the table that I'm at is crocodile. The bedroom is, or the, the kitchen is brushed metallic, you know, so interior film is great that way because you have all those textures, but you know, even though you have, let's say 500 options from cover style, you're still limited to those options. And now, you know, you have the texture love, in print. So how many options can you give your client? Millions, you know? So, and I think there's clients, especially in homes, you know, in your bedroom, you really want, I mean, who doesn't want a textured snake above their bed? You know, I, I do, you know what I'm saying? But, but even, okay. The, 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 the piece that we're doing in the bedroom is this, you mm -hmm. know, and this is, you know, classic wallpaper, you know, kind of, you know, Victorian style, but I mean, to have that textured as opposed to just a flat print on the wall, I mean, it, it's really stunning what you can do. And for me, I it's a very tactile thing. And I think people really respond to that. And they'll respond to it with their pocketbooks, for sure. That is true. That is very true. Um, yeah. Well, we'll take a look at the chat. Uh, if anyone has any further questions about whether it's UV solvent comparison or 2.5B in general, um, you can ask those questions in chat. We'll be here for a couple more minutes to answer any questions. If anyone has anything that they want to ask uh, myself or Justin. I did put a, in the comment section for any of those uh, people watching right now, uh, we have a coupon code at the Rap Institute that we made special for this event. And it's a uh, TWI Mamaki, uh, all caps, 2022. And that gets you 15% off a one year membership to the Rap Institute. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, around $9 a month that you're paying for unlimited access to all the videos. And I can't recommend it even more, not because it's my company, but my team is so passionate about putting out these videos. And everyone who's a member says, even after the first video, they've made their money back because you know, we're, we're a neutral platform. We're hundred percent, you know, we don't, we're not, you know, making videos to sell products. We're making videos to help the industry and make everyone better. So uh, it's what we're really passionate about, what we love. So um, we have lots of videos. I mean, I hope more and more, we have more videos coming out on 2.5 D uh, because God is, yeah, I'm just even having this laptop. I'm telling you, I'm, this is, I'm not faking it. I love this, this texture and feel it's really, there's nothing like it. So. Got you. Got you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Um, so yeah, we'll just be checking for anyone. If you have any further questions, like I said, feel free to let me throw that in the chat for you. There you go. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> if you have any further questions, anyone, that's the link right there, or I'm sorry, the promo code that Justin was referring to. If anyone wants to go ahead and copy that. <laughs> John, I will get you that 2.5D. I have extras left over, so extras left over. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a, yeah, as I said, I mean, the one thing you have to think about it, and I think you can answer this, Melvin, I think it's important for those people mm -hmm. out there watching is, you know, on the flat rigid substrate, you can really build it up. But for the full print, you know, I would recommend even off of this, because I think this one you said it was seven layers clear, then one white, and then one ink. So it was basically nine, correct? Correct. It seems like I would personally maybe, I mean, I love the height of it, but in terms of install, I would like to see maybe if we can do another experiment sometime, I'd like to see how it performs with maybe five or six. Cause I okay. think you would lose a little of the three, a little of the 2.5 D factor, but I think it might make it a little more install friendly. And I'd also like to see it with cast, you know, and again, this is my brain already is already kind of thinking that cast doesn't react to heat so much, but I don't know, it's tough. And this is, this is why I love the wrap Institute because Calendar film is a little thicker, so it has a little more body, so it's more rigid. Mm -hmm. So I think it could handle the 2.5D better, while it's cast, even though it's more flexible, might be a little thinner, and it might not handle the rigid substrate on top. So maybe calendar is better to use for 2.5D. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I mean, that actually makes a fair uh, point. Um, I will say that that was one of the one things when I was printing it, and after we shipped it to you, 
Uh, I was concerned that it was going to fold in on itself and you wouldn't be able to apply it. But like I said, you definitely found a method to do that. So it worked out perfectly. Um, I mean, I, if I hold it up to the, the screen right now, I mean, I noticed that certain, like on the edges of the of, of the film, it seemed to pick up a little bit of the film in, in transit. So in certain areas, it did, it did kind of pick up from the liner prematurely. Um, so that's something to think about that maybe you want to print and install same day so you don't have that curl off the edge. Um, so I, what I love about wrapping, especially with new stuff, is like CSI. You're like you're trying to you're trying to problem solve the you know why th certain things are happening and then kind of adjust from that. But um, yeah, I think I, I mean IJ40 is a superior film. It's a great polymer calendar film. So my first thought is that's probably the best one to do it on. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, but I would be interested to see how it performed, let's say on you know th uh, Avery's 1105 or Orfel's film or something like that to see. But I think for the most part, maybe a little thinner ink and then maybe a different substrate to see how it performs. But marrying those panels ahead of time is critical because it was really interesting yeah. to see that uh, to do if I had to do two drops from ceiling to floor and try to register those panels in a normal way by, t you know, uh, it would be impossible. You know, so I think marrying those panels together ahead of time and dropping as one panel is absolutely essential for quality. Yeah, especially when you have such a uh, busy uh, content in the image. <laughs> Uh, if it was a, obviously if it was a flat color, it wouldn't really matter as much, you know, because you're just seaming it down there. Um, yeah. But when, when you have something that you have to perfectly match up the whole way down, yes, I do agree that the method that you did with the tape on the back was probably the best method. Yeah, and that you know th that's a great method. A lot of people use that for wrapping semi trailers and box trucks and stuff like that. You know, and that's an excellent, excellent way to you know do normal 2D printing. But I think for two two point five D printing is cool. You know, but obviously for a laptop, you don't need to do it. But um, yeah, maybe I'm just going to get into laptop wraps. Just, I'm just going to go <laughs> Oh, well, you know, new business, new new ventures. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if we're even thinking, I'll probably make a video on the wrap too. So if I'm doing a laptop next time, the 2.5D print will be just inside the edge, and everything on the outside edge will go back to the normal print film. So it'll basically have oh. one layer of ink on the outside. So if you neutralize the edges and put all the 2.5D in the main area, I think that would actually be a good solution. So That's more to that. come. More yeah, yeah. It's all it's all based off the design. And I think you have great, great ideas when it comes to how to work around a design for your application. So that's 100%. why even even when you said uh the overlap part, make sure I don't print uh uh the 2.5D for the overlap when you do the one inch. I thought that was a great idea too, because personally I wouldn't have thought to do that ahead of time. Um mm. and I think that would have really been difficult to do had that sent it to you with that overlap and the, the texture was on there as well. That would have created a non-happy wife and therefore a non-happy <laughs> life. I don't yeah. want to be responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did great. So yeah, I mean, I'd love to, you know, and I look for, I hope we can do, you know, the Rapid Studio Mamaki moving forward. I'd love to kind of explore this because I think there's a lot of potential for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, well, as we're wrapping up, I do want to say thank you for joining us um, today for our Innovation Days. Uh, for everyone that's watching, um, this is the last day. So thank you everyone for joining us. It's been a very long and exciting week. Um, I hope everybody has gotten a lot of information that they want. Make sure you're reaching out to um, your contacts, your dealers, your your sales reps, anyone that you need about any information, or whether it be machines, applications, uh, further information through either Justin, if you want to, if you have like a way that um, people can uh, contact you uh, outside of this. Uh, Rapinstitute.com is the best way, or Justin at Rapinstitute.com. You can always reach me out anytime. Cool. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we can, um, I guess we can go ahead and close up everything. Um, again, thank you for joining us, Justin. Everything was very okay. informative. Um, everyone, please stay tuned. Uh, there should be another session at 1 PM, um, which is about an hour ish hour, 15 minutes. Um, so please join us. I believe that video is with Hugo. Yes, Hugo and Gravitech. Yeah, so uh, that should be in about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, again, thank you everyone for joining us and thank you again, Justin. Thank you, Melvin. Cheers. All right, see you. Bye.